Hello, hi and welcome. So the present topic is about uh, right about the extent and uh, the nature of uh, surety's liability. Uh, under contract of uh, guarantee, you know that uh, surety plays uh, a very very crucial role and uh, what about the extent of uh, his liability and uh, what about uh, the nature of surety's liability is the topic now for a discussion and the liability of uh, the surety is uh, co-extensive with that of uh, principal debtor you know that uh, the principal debtor is uh, primary liability uh, with him <clears throat> and the secondary liability is with uh, the surety. So which means to say co-extensive with that of a principal debtor unless it is otherwise provided by the contract in all normal circumstances the liability of the surety is uh, co-extensive with that of uh, the principal debtor. And if you make an analysis of this statement, the term co-extensive with that of principal debtor means that the surety is liable for what the principal debtor is liable. However, the liability of uh, the surety may be made less than that of uh, the principal debtor by an express contract to that effect. That is the only difference. It may be less the liability if there is an express contract. Otherwise, the liability is a coextensive with that of the principal debtor. So, the liability of surety arises only on default by the principal debtor. But as soon as the principal debtor defaults, the liability of surety begins and uh, runs coextensive with the liability of uh, principal debtor in the sense that the surety will be liable for all those sums for which principal debtor is uh, liable. So this is what it says very more analytically. Where a debtor cannot be held liable on account of any defect in the document, then uh, the liability of surety also ceases. If the liability is there for the debtor, then only the liability will be coextensive with the surety. If there is no liability on account of any defect in the document uh, against the debtor, then automatically the liability of surety also gets ceases. And the surety of uh, liability continues even if the principal debtor has not been showed or is uh, omitted from being showed. In other words, a creditor may choose to proceed against the surety first unless there is an agreement to the contract or, or to the contrary. So which means to say it is the discretion of the creditor to rise uh, or the claim either from the surety or from the principal debtor. Uh, if there is a contract to raise the, uh, to collect the liability only from the principal debtor first, then only the creditor is supposed to collect it first from the principal debtor. So it is the discretion of the uh, creditor to claim his amount. If he wants, he can get it first from the surety also. And the nature of surety's liability can be summed up as a liability of surety is of a secondary nature as he is liable only on default of uh, the principal debtor. His liability arises immediately on the default by the principal debtor. The creditor has a right to sue the surety directly without first proceeding against the principal debtor. So the nature says that the first point of the nature of surety liability is the liability of surety is a secondary in nature. So which means to say the liability only on the default of principal debtor it happens to the surety.
and his liability arises immediately on default by the principal debtor. If the principal debtor is defaulted to make payment to the creditor, then immediately, immediately on the default, the liability arises against the surety. And the third point says that the creditor has a right. This talks about the right of a creditor. If he, if the creditor wants, he can sue the surety directly without proceeding against the principal debtor also. This option is available. This right is available to the creditor. So that is the reason the surety's liability is a co-extensive with that of the principal debtor. So this is uh, the one topic uh, where uh, there is a likely question to the question may come like this right about the extent and the nature of surety's liability. So the next uh, important uh, uh, one is that explain about the continuing guarantee with some examples. So what do you understand? See you know that the guarantee are of uh, two categories. One is the specific guarantee and the other one is the continuing guarantee. Specific guarantee is for a, a specific uh, contract or for a specific transaction. When it comes to a continuing guarantee, it says that a guarantee which extends to a series of transactions, it extends to a series of transactions is called as a continuing guarantee. The essence of continuing guarantee is that it applies not to specific number of transactions but to any number of transactions and makes the surety liability for the unpaid balance at the end of the guarantee. The surety is liable for the unpaid amount balance at the end of the guarantee. So this is uh, uh, the definition as it is being given under section 129. Uh, for uh, the continuing guarantee and let us see one example for the better understanding a in consideration that B will employ C uh, in collecting the rents of B's Jamindaris promises B to be responsible to the amount of rupees 5000 rupees for due collection and payment uh, by C of those uh, rents. This is a continuing guarantee. A, the first uh, party is A in consideration that B employs uh, C. B is uh, the creditor and C is uh, the principal debtor here and A is a surety and C is employed for collecting rent of B's Jamindari and uh, uh, a promises B to uh, B uh, to be uh, and he promises B to be responsible to the amount of rupees five thousand rupees and the surety's liability is for rupees five thousand for due collection and payment by C of those rents. This is uh, a continuing guarantee. This guarantee contract will continue as long as B C is being employed by Mr. B. And if anything goes uh, a loss to Mr. B because of C's action, then the liability of Mr. A will be there to the amount of rupees 5000 rupees. This is an example of continuing guarantee. In continuing guarantee, the liability of surety continues till the performance or the discharge of the transaction entered into or the guarantee is withdrawn. So until <coughs> The, so until the guarantee comes to an end, uh, till that time the continuing guarantee will uh, continue endlessly. The next uh, topic is about uh, uh, what are the modes of uh, discharge of surety and explain each of them with some examples. So. Discharge of surety means a surety is said to be discharged when his liability as a surety comes to an end. So when his liability as a surety comes to an end, then only a surety is considered to be discharged. So to get discharge of surety and what are the modes available? The various modes of discharge of surety are discussed here. One is uh, by revocation of contract of guarantee. Revocation means the cancellation. 
and the second one is uh, by the conduct of uh, the creditor by the conduct of the creditor creditor means the person who uh, to whom the uh, surety guarantee is given by the surety and uh, by invalidation of contract of guarantee if the contract of guarantee becomes invalid then automatically the surety will get discharged so these are the three modes of discharge of surety one is by revocation and other one is by conduct of the creditor and third one is uh, uh, validation validation or invalidation it should be on a, a invalidation of uh, uh, contract of guarantee so the first under the first uh, uh, mode that is a, a revocation of a contract of guarantee so how a revocation of contract of guarantee happens which leads to discharge of surety a revocation of uh, the contract of guarantee how it happens that which leads to discharge of guarantee so revocation of continuing guarantee will happen by notice so one way of revocation of the contract of guarantee is by giving a notice of revocation of continuing guarantee that was given under section 130 the continuing guarantee may be at any time be revoked by the surety at any time be revoked means cancelled by surety as to the future transactions by notice to the creditors right a specific guarantee can be revoked only if liability to principal debtor has not accrued a specific guarantee you know that there are two types of guarantees one is a continuing guarantee and other one is the specific guarantee in case of a continuing guarantee it can be revoked it can be revoked by the surety as to the future transactions only Say for example, uh, if there is a continuing guarantee uh, for a period of 5 years, after 1 year, if uh, the uh, contract of guarantee is revoked by giving a notice and the surety is liable for the 1 year transactions but not for the transactions which will happen after serving of the notice of revocation of the uh, surety right so that is with respect to the uh, continuing guarantee <clears throat> and when it comes to a specific guarantee it can be revoked only if liability to principal debtor has not accrued if the principal debtor uh, does not get any liability accrued by the date then the specific guarantee can be revoked by the surety and there are some examples also which will make you to understand uh, how a contract of guarantee can be revoked by a surety so the second is that the revocation of a continuing guarantee by surety's death right how the revocation happens a revocation of a guarantee happens by notice is one thing and by surety's death is the other thing by notice and by surety's death in the absence of any contract to the contrary the death of surety operates as a revocation of a continuing guarantee if the surety is died then automatically there is no surety at all for that particular contract of guarantee is concerned uh, but that liability is there as to the future transactions taking place after the death of surety however the surety's estate remains liable for the past transactions which have already taken place uh, before death of the surety so surety's property is liable for the transactions that happened before the death of the surety and after the death of the surety there is no liability to the surety and uh, it would lead to discharge of the surety uh, by uh, surety's death <clears throat> and by renovation by, sorry by novation so by novation means the surety under original contract is discharged if a fresh contract is entered if a fresh contract is entered the surety who was there in the original contract is considered to be discharged into either between the same parties or between the other parties if a fresh contract is entered uh, then automatically the 
original contract surety is considered to be discharged. This is the discharge of the surety by renovation, uh, revocation, discharge of uh, a surety by means of uh, revocation which can be possible by notice and which can be possible by surety's death and uh, by, which also can be possible by novation which means to say a fresh contract if it is entered in the place of the original contract the surety of the original contract uh, is uh, discharged so the second uh, mode of uh, discharge of uh, surety is uh, by conduct of the creditor by conduct of the creditor by conduct of the creditor the surety is get discharged uh, discharge means here not to discharge from the hospital or something he is discharged from the liability he will not have any liability against that particular contract of guarantee so students how to understand in that perspective and uh, but here by conduct of the creditor the first way is that by variance in terms of contract by variance in terms of contract if the creditor makes any variance in the terms of the contract then automatically the surety will get discharged from liability where there is any variance in terms of contracts between the principal debtor and uh, the creditor without surety's consent it would discharge it would discharge surety in respect of all transactions taking place subsequent to such variance if any change in the terms of contract happens between the principal debtor and the creditor without surety's consent in all such cases since from the date of that change in the terms of contract the liability will not be there to surety with respect to that particular contract of guarantee and uh, <clears throat> Uh, that variation which is not substantial or material or which is beneficial to the surety will not discharge him from his liability. So this point says that if the variation in the contract of guarantee is not material, which means to say it is if it is not significant or the variation of the terms of the contract of guarantee is beneficial to the surety, that will not discharge him of his liability. So this was uh, discussed in a case between Mr. Uh, uh, Aniruddhan versus uh, Thomco's Bank Limited. The, so during that there was a court uh, judgment which says that there was a variance in the terms of the contract wherein the principal, uh, the surety of rupees twenty five thousand has brought down to rupees twenty thousand. So that which was uh, the liability of uh, surety has coming from 25,000 to 20,000. As a result, there was a variance in the terms of the contract of guarantee. Even though, even though the liability of the surety is not discharged. The liability of the surety is not discharged because the variance of the terms of the contract of guarantee is in favor of or is beneficial to the surety. So, as such, though his consent was not obtained by the principal debtor and the creditor, this contract of guarantee will not discharge the surety from his liability. Understand? So, this is one exception. So, that is been given. And uh, by release or discharge of a principal debtor, so, which mean to say the surety is discharged if the creditor enters into a fresh contract with the principal debtor by which the principal debtor is released or does any act or omission the legal consequence of, of which is uh, uh, the discharge of the principal debtor. So, in both the cases automatically the surety is discharged. If a creditor makes a conduct which is with reference to entering a fresh contract with the principal debtor or uh, the creditor does any act or omission or uh, the legal consequence of which is the discharge of the principal debtor, in all these two circumstances, 
the surety gets discharged from his liability to the contract of uh, guarantee and uh, discharge of surety when creditor compounds with uh, or gives time to or agrees not to show the principal debtor so which mean to say here a contract between the creditor and the principal debtor by which the creditor makes a composition or promises to give time to the uh, principal debtor or promises uh, the prince promises not to show the principal debtor in all such cases discharges the surety unless the surety gives assent to such contract unless uh, unless the surety assents to such contract if there is uh, any contract between only creditor and the principal debtor with respect to uh, composition or with respect to promise to give time to pay the liability back to the creditor or promises not to sue the principal debtor uh, by the creditor in all such circumstances if that happens without consent of the surety then automatically the surety is discharged from the liability of contract of guarantee right so the third mode is that cases where surety is here these are some exceptions cases where the surety is not discharged cases where the surety is not discharged surety is not discharged when an agreement made with a third person to give time to principal debtor so when surety is not discharged when agreement is made with the third person to give time to principal debtor if the agreement is made with the, the principal debtor then surety is discharged if the agreement is made by the creditor with the third person to give time to the principal debtor in such a case the surety will not get discharged from his liability to the contract of guarantee so the second is that the creditor's forbearance to show does not discharge surety mere forbearance on the part of the creditor to show the principal debtor or to enforce any other remedy against him does not in the absence of any provisions in the guarantee to the contrary discharges the surety if you see this example you will understand b was to see a debt guaranteed by a b was to b is a principal debtor and c is a creditor and a is uh, here surety the debt becomes payable c does not show b so here c is a creditor he does not show the b who is a principal debtor for a year so for a year he did, he did not show after the debt has become payable a is uh, which mean to say the surety is not discharged from this surety ship so the liability of a as a surety still remain because here he has given some time to the principal debtor and he did not show him for a period of one year that does not make the that does not make the surety to get out of his liability or to get out of his surety ship to the contract of guarantee right so and the another way of the conduct that would lead to discharge by surety by creditors act or omission impairing surety's eventual remedy if the creditor does any act which inconsistent with the rights of the surety or omits to do any act which his duty to surety requires him to do and the eventual remedy of the surety himself against the principal debtor is thereby impaired the surety is uh, discharged see here this point is uh, very very crucial which is given under section 139 if the creditor if the creditor 
does any act which is inconsistent with the rights of the surety if creditor makes any act which is inconsistent with the rights of the surety or if the creditor omits to do any act which his duty to to the surety requires him to do whatever he has to do as a, a, a duty towards the surety if he does not do it and the eventual remedy of the surety himself against the principal debtor is uh, thereby impaired in all such three circumstances the three circumstances the surety gets discharged from his liability to the contract of guarantee right so then the third mode of uh, uh, getting discharge of surety by invalidation of the contract of guarantee by invalidation of the contract of guarantee also a surety will be get discharged so one is that one is that guarantee obtained by misrepresentation if a guarantee is obtained by misrepresentation then the surety gets discharged any guarantee which has been obtained by means of misrepresentation made by the creditor or with his knowledge and assent concerning a material part of the transaction is invalid in such a case the surety gets discharged uh, b point says that guarantee obtained by concealment is also invalid any guarantee which the creditor has obtained by means of keeping silence as to the material circumstances would lead to invalid the contract so then the guarantee becomes invalid and automatically automatically the surety is discharged and a guarantee on contract that a creditor guarantee on contract that a creditor shall not act on it until co-surety joins if there is a condition to join a co-surety to a contract of guarantee uh, if the co-surety does not join then automatically the surety whoever was originally there gets uh, uh, discharged where a person gives a guarantee upon a contract that the creditor shall not act upon it until another person until another person join person has joined in it as a co-surety so the co the guarantee is not valid if that other person does not join so in this case also in this case also the surety discharges so students here you need to understand this topic is a very very important in your examination point of view so there are uh, uh, three modes of discharge of surety one is by revocation of contract of guarantee and the other is by the conduct of the creditor and the third is by invalidation of uh, the contract of guarantee under revocation there are about three to four uh, ways of revocation of uh, contract of guarantee which leads to discharge of a surety and by the conduct of creditor also there are about three to four ways where the discharge of uh, the discharge of a surety takes place and in the same way by the invalidation of the contract of guarantee also a surety gets discharged from his liability to the contract of guarantee so all these uh, three uh, with uh, the sub points uh, you are expected to know and it will be very difficult for you to write all these examples in your examination but for your understanding sake wherever you want you can refer to them examples writing in examination these many may not be possible if you want you can write one for uh, uh, wherever it is uh, required so this uh, is uh, one important topic in your examinations and uh, the uh, last topic uh, under this uh, uh, contract of indemnity and guarantee is that what are the rights of the surety the rights of uh, the surety against the 
creditor or principal debtor or co-sureties. You all know that uh, for a contract of a guarantee, there are three parties. One is a surety, one is a creditor and the other one is a principal debtor. So, and in some cases, there will be co-sureties also. And uh, what are the rights of a surety and how he can exercise his rights uh, against the parties to a contract of guarantee? So, first one is a right against the creditor. What kind of rights a surety can exercise against the creditor? And second is uh, the rights against the principal debtor. So, uh, to whom the surety is given by the guarantor. Uh, and the third one is rights against the co-sureties. If at all there are co-sureties, what kind of rights are available? If you see this uh, a small diagram which explains very nicely all the rights of a surety. So, the first right is against the principal debtor. And against the principal debtor, the surety has uh, two kinds of rights. One is the right of subrogation and other one is the right of indemnity. So, right of subrogation that uh, I will explain you when we go for the explanation part. And uh, the second right is the right of indemnity. And in the same way, the surety will have uh, certain rights against the creditor. So, against the creditor, one is the right to set off. And the second one is the right to share reduction is this and the third one is the right to security right to security these are the three rights that a surety have against the creditor who is a party to contract of guarantee and against co-sureties what is his rights and the right to contribution right to contribution is the right that a surety can exercise against the co-sureties. So, if you remember this small diagram without missing a single concept, you can give a beautiful answer in your examinations. And uh, being it is the last uh, topic uh, in the unit uh, as well as uh, the important topic, there are many likely chances to get this question in your examinations. So, first uh, one we will see right against the principal debtor, uh, the first right, uh, right of subrogation. What is the right of uh, subrogation? Where uh, a guaranteed debt has become due or a default of the principal debtor to perform a guaranteed duty has taken place, the surety upon payment or performance of all that uh, he is liable for is invested with all the rights which the creditor had against the principal debtor. So, this right of uh, this right is uh, known as a right of subrogation. It means that on payment of the guaranteed debt or performance of the guaranteed duty, the surety steps into the shoes of uh, the creditor. So, students here, uh, the right of subrogation means uh, you have to understand once uh, the surety makes payment to the creditor on behalf of the principal debtor upon his default and whatever the rights a creditor will have against the principal debtor, all those rights will be get transferred to the surety. So, that is called a right of subrogation. That is called as a right of subrogation. And uh, the second uh, right uh, of, uh, a against the principal debtor is implied promise to indemnify surety. Implied promise to indemnify surety. In every contract uh, of uh, guarantee, there is an implied promise by the principal debtor to indemnify the surety. The surety is entitled to recover from the principal debtor whatever sum he has rightfully paid under the guarantee but not sums uh, which he paid wrongfully. So, students here the point is that indemnify surety means if the surety makes a payment if the surety makes a payment on behalf of the principal debtor to the creditor, so there is an implied promise that the principal debtor has to indemnify the surety. 
So whatever the payments the surety made on behalf of the principal debtor rightfully to the creditor should be given back to the surety by the uh, principal debtor. So that is uh, the implied uh, promise to indemnify surety. These are the two rights against the principal debtor which are available to a surety. And when it comes to the right against the creditor, surety's right to benefit of uh, creditor's securities, which means to say that under a contract of guarantee, if there is any securities underlying in the underlying in the contract of guarantee, whatever the security that is available under that will come to the creditor in order to uh, get himself compensated that money from the principal debtor. That is this point which is given under section 141. A surety is entitled to the benefit of every security which the creditor has against the principal debtor at the time when contract of uh, surety ship is entered into. Whether the surety knows of the existence of such a security or not and if the creditor loses or without the consent of the surety parts with such security, the surety is discharged to the extent of the value of that security. That is the point here. And next one is a right to set off. If the creditor shoes the surety, if the creditor shoes uh, the surety for payment of principal debtor's liability, the surety may have the benefit of the set off, if any, that the principal debtor had against the creditor, which means to say, say for example, creditor has given 10 lakhs rupees uh, to the principal debtor. And uh, in turn, if the creditor is uh, due rupees 1 lakh to the principal debtor, say, so the net liability to the principal debtor will be only 9 lakhs. So that set of right will also be available to the surety if the liability falls on his head. So that is the right to set off. And the uh, next one is a right to share a reduction. The surety has a right to claim proportionate rejection in his liability if the principal debtor becomes insolvent. So if the principal debtor becomes insolvent and if his property is available only say 50% to pay the liabilities and uh, he and, uh, and that 50% uh, only uh, uh, is defaulted to pay to the uh, creditor in such a case, the liability of the surety also will be only to the extent of 50%. It also will come down from 100% uh, uh, to 50% of the total uh, uh, amount. So here the creditor has to forego the amount. The surety's liability will not go beyond the liability of the principal debtor. That is the point here. And the third rights uh, with respect to the surety right against co-sureties. Co-surety means when the same debtor duty is guaranteed by two or more persons, such persons are called as co-sureties. And co-surety is liable to contribute equally. So if uh, uh, the uh, principal debtor fails to make a payment, then all the sureties, co-sureties will have to distribute the liability equally among themselves in order to pay the amount to the creditor. The equality of burden is the basis of co surety -ship. This is contained in section 146 which states that when two or more persons are co sureties for the same debt or duty either jointly or severally and whether under the same or the different contracts and uh, whether with or without the knowledge of each other, the core sureties in the absence of any contract to the contrary are liable as between themselves to pay each an equal share of whole debt or of uh, the part of it which remains unpaid uh, by the principal debtor. So this is a, a contribution clause. So if there is no specific uh, contract in contrary among the co-sureties with regard to repayment of the liability as and when it falls on the sureties, 
they have a equal share of whole debt they have to distribute among themselves and they have to pay to the creditor on behalf of uh, the principal debtor so dear students uh, these are uh, the three uh, kinds of rights which are available to the surety against the principal debtor against the creditor and against the co-sureties these are the rights of uh, the surety and which is uh, the last topic under the unit one uh, which the chapter is uh, the uh, contract of uh, indemnity and guarantee right so with this the first unit uh, uh, of uh, the first chapter in module 2 which is uh, a, which is a contract of indemnity and a cont uh, contract of guarantees has come to an end and i thank you all and pay much attention to listen to this uh, lectures again and again while listening i advise you to make a uh, notes uh, possibly so that you can register the points in your mind better i thank you all and best wishes thank you